You can use the five minute rule to get started and avoid frustration. This is a great one. The five minute rule is a psychological tactic that can be used for breaking bad habits or creating new ones. When you use the five minute rule, you are either doing something for five minutes when creating a new habit, or you're stopping yourself from doing something for five minutes when breaking a bad habit. And you're stopping yourself by replacing it with something else. So this is how you can use the five minute rule to create a new habit. When creating a new habit, it's usually hard to motivate yourself. For example, if you're trying to get into the habit of reading more, your mind probably wanders after the first few minutes of reading. Same goes for learning something new, such as learning to play a new instrument or practicing a new sport. If it takes much effort, your mind is going to put up a lot of resistance. This is natural. You'll keep looking for distractions. I'm sure that's happened to you before. This constant distraction is especially a problem for people who use their cell phones and Facebook a lot, something that constantly notifies them of something. It programs them to expect distraction all the time. So it makes it hard to focus on things that require focus. Anyway, in this case, you can use the five minute rule to commit to the activity for just five minutes. That makes starting easy. You can do anything for just five minutes, right? Just set a timer for five minutes, eliminate all distractions, turn off cell phones and anything unrelated to the activity you're going to be doing for five minutes. Block out any background noise with headphones and uh, play music with no words if necessary. Then you can start. You don't have to do the activity for more than five minutes. But make the decision to be completely focused 100% on the activity and nothing else. When the timer's done, you can stop and go back to whatever else you feel like doing, if you like. You can continue on the activity as well, but it's completely optional. The great thing about this trick is that it gets you over the biggest barrier to doing any activity, and that's just starting. When you're already doing an activity for a few minutes, it's easy to get wrapped up in it, so continuing is easy. If you feel like stopping after five minutes, don't worry. You can stop after the five minutes is up and try again tomorrow. This is still a victory because you'll be more likely to want to do the activity the next day after you did it the day before. And it trains your focus, a lot like heavy weightlifting trains your muscles. You'll be stronger for next time. So no matter what, you win when you use the five minute rule. If you think you have a problem with chronic procrastination, however, and you constantly put things off that are important to you all the time, this probably won't work or it won't work as well as it should. There are underlying causes you need to deal with when it comes to procrastination. In some cases, procrastination can be like an addiction or a sickness for certain people. Check out my How to Stop Procrastinating video course to cure that problem. You'll learn how to diagnose why you procrastinate so you can apply the right treatment to stop procrastinating altogether. Since you are a student in this course, you can grab a coupon code at the end of this course for my student discount, which is pretty steep. Now, you can also break a habit with the five minute rule. You can also use the five minute rule to prevent yourself from giving in to a craving. When you're experiencing a craving, just set a timer and do something else for the next five minutes that takes your attention away. Attach this new activity to the cue to your habit. Remove all distractions and get into the activity. If the five minutes are up, and you still want to get into your craving, that's okay. You can give in and go ahead with your bad habit as usual. But chances are that after waiting five minutes, one of two things will happen. The craving will be gone, or you'll want to keep going with the other activity and see how much longer you can go without giving in. This helps you lengthen the time between the cue and your routine. And the more you lengthen this time, the easier it will be for you to resist any bad habit. Then, slowly but surely, the bad habit goes away. Viktor Frankl, 
the psychologist, the Holocaust survivor, and writer of the classic self-help book, Man's Search for Meaning, called this the time between stimulus and response. He said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So as it turns out, self-discipline is not the ability to force yourself to do something you don't want to do. When you get better at it, you will see what people call self-discipline is actually cl closer to patience. So remember that self-discipline is just patience. It's the ability to wait out your temptations long enough to start doing something else constructive. When you get a temptation, you can choose to cave immediately, or you can wait a moment, think, and choose to do something constructive.